difficult, difficult. His hair. My ministries, Christian Church Sunday School. Good morning. Good morning. Prayerful. Not lost anyone. We're just now getting started. Two minutes early. Uh, and we praise and thank God we are two minutes early. This lesson has been lining up with the times, and I thank and praise God for that problem fixed. Glory be unto your name. All right, so we are still live. We're still live. We've had some technical difficulties. It's just now 930. So you're just now joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church Sunday School. We had some technical difficulties this morning. So I welcome you guys. We are in the book of Proverbs. My name is Dr. Harold Elam Jr. And we are coming from Proverbs. The title of the lesson for today is the value of wisdom. Uh, while we wait for people to get aligned up because I probably had two or three posts to go on. But because uh, we had some technical difficulties, uh, my Internet had went down. So we're able to come back, and this morning we're going to be coming again like last week from the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. Um, I'm giving you an opportunity to get your Bibles, get to the scripture. We're in Proverbs 2, uh, verses 1 through 11. Share the video, invite your friends. Uh, let's get our Sunday school started. I'm super excited this morning. I always like coming from the book of Proverbs. Last week, I was excited. Pastor got me super excited, man, with that message from Acts 24. If you missed the morning message, man, he was all over the lesson and, 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 and the characteristics of what we're always talking about in Sunday school. Uh, Pastor said that my story will not change. My story will not change. Well, I'm here to bear witness to pastor's message this morning that my story will not change. Once you move into position, and you know me, if you've ever been in my Sunday school classes, but once you move in position, you find out your purpose. Then once you know your purpose, you have a position of purpose. That's the good thing. See, we have to know not only what position we're in, but the purpose of the position we're in. And once you're in that position, I tell you to stay right there. Stay right there. Don't be moved. Don't change your story regardless of where it is. You are in a position of purpose. This is Nehemiah Ministry Sunday School. I'm just giving you some commentary right now from from the morning message, I, I pastor came this morning and he came from Acts 24. We've been uh, in, in a series in Acts 24. He said that my story will not change. Well, this morning, we're going to study from Proverbs like we did last week, uh, the value of wisdom, the value of wisdom. So good morning. Let us pray. If you don't know, we're in Proverbs 2, 1 through 11, and we're about to start our Sunday school class. We're in Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another day's journey. God, we thank you for the message this morning from our pastor. At, Lord, we just ask that you cover him, keep him, restore him, and replace those things in which he's given out. Lord, we ask you to bless those that are on this broadcast, Lord. Touch each and every heart and mind, God, that they be able to receive, Lord. Touch me as a teacher, Lord. Less of me and more of you. Let the words come off of my lips that are that are that that will articulate and implement into their lives a lesson that can be learned. Heavenly Father, we speak to you this morning. We look to the hills from which cometh our help, and all of our help cometh from the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. You know we about to take off. It's Sunday school. I'm Dr. Harold Elam Jr. This is Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church Sunday School, where the pastor is Kelsey West, his beautiful wife, Carmen West, and the prophet is Kyle West. Glory be unto your name. I tell you, if you want to have church, you got to go west. Hallelujah. <laughs> the value of wisdom. Good morning, good morning, good morning. The enthusiasm does not stop. Glory be unto your name this morning. Hey, we're going to read the aim for change, and I'm super excited. We're in Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. I will be coming from the New Living Translations. Some of my translations will be the King James Version. Depends on how the message has to be reached. But I need you to be in Proverbs. Are you in Proverbs? You're in Proverbs. Let me see some hearts. Let me see some love. Let me see some interaction. If you're in Proverbs 2, we're going to start in verses 1, but we're going to read the aim for change. You know, every week I got three words I need us to focus on. The aim for change. By the end of the lesson, you, we will, by the end of the lesson, we will understand. Understand is our first word. Somebody write that one down for me. Understand is our first word. We will understand the search for wisdom that comes from God is most important. So that's, that's one. One thing we're going to do is we're going to understand the search for wisdom, which means we got to be looking for something that comes from God is most important. That's the most important thing. Wisdom from God. Two, yearn. Yearn is our word. Y-E-A-R. 
Y-E-R-N, Y-E-A-R-N, glory, <laughs> Y-E-A-R-N, yearn is our second word, yearn for the wisdom that comes from God. So we're, uh, first we're going to understand the search for wisdom that comes from God is most important. Then we're going to yearn for the wisdom of God. And I looked up those words as I give them to you as definitions, and yearn means I'm looking for something, I'm searching for something. Uh, I wholeheartedly, in fact, I still got it up. And I want to give you that because have an intense feeling, a longing for something. We're talking about the word yearn. We're talking about the word yearn because the, in the aim for change, we're going to yearn for wisdom that comes from God. So yearn means an intense feeling or longing for something typically that one has lost. So maybe you've lost the wisdom of God. Maybe you've lost that relationship with God. Maybe you've put down your relationship with God and you're starting to follow after the world. So we're going to yearn for wisdom that comes from God. And we're going to center. Center is that other word. Somebody put that down there. We're going to center our hearts, wills, and thoughts in the wisdom that comes from God. So the three words by the end of this lesson, we're going to understand, we're going to yearn, and we're going to center. Now, center can mean several different things. I need you to help me get to the right definition because center can mean the middle point of a circle. Center can also mean the point of an activity or process as directed. But we're going to use the third one, which is a verb, center, uh, cause or have something as a major concern. So my concern, because I'm a center, or my concern is our hearts, our wills, and our thoughts in the wisdom that comes from God. So the three things, by the end of this lesson, help me out this morning, I ain't hearing from y'all, glory be unto your name, God. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, understand the search for wisdom that comes from God. We're gonna yearn for the wisdom that comes from God, and we're gonna center our heart, wills, and thoughts in the wisdom that comes from God. The title of the lesson is the value of wisdom. Good morning, good morning, good morning, hallelujah excitement and enthusiasm. You got to get excited for God because I know God done something for you this morning. Before pastor got into the word this morning, I heard him clearly say, let us celebrate the Lord. Let us get excited about the Lord. Let us worship the Lord. Well, we're in Sunday school. We're in Nehemiah. We're an example to the rest of the churches in the world. And on this broadcast, I need you to get excited with me. Hallelujah. I need you to send up some hearts and some love. I need you to understand that God loved you in spite of what you did yesterday in spite of your ways that's why God has given us the reason of uh, the ability to repent so we have to get excited Lord you didn't have to wake me up this morning but you did hallelujah you didn't have to give me shelter but you did hallelujah you didn't have to give me a broadcast or a voice but you did hallelujah you got to get excited for the Lord share this share your enthusiasm Where's your excitement for God? I don't want you to get excited for me because I ain't going to do nothing for you. All I can do is water and plant glory and then draw you to Christ. But you got to get excited for the one who gave his life. Hallelujah. That we can have life more abundantly. Get excited this morning. Get excited for the word of God. Get excited about what God has done in your life. Oh, man. Amen. The value of wisdom is the title of the lesson. We're in Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. The aim for change. I'm going to read it one more time. We will understand the search for wisdom that comes from God is most important. We will yearn for the wisdom that comes from God and center our hearts, wills, and thoughts in the wisdom that comes from God. So look, obviously, we come in, everything we get is coming from God. Now, here's our in-focus story. Caleb loved his father, Don, and trusted him. He often tried to intimidate, I mean, excuse me, to emanate his father in pursuing the same things he did. He asked his dad several times to let him take karate. Don had taken karate as a child. Don finally agreed to let Caleb take karate lessons. Caleb did not understand why his dad insisted on his watching the movie Karate Kid repeatedly. Caleb, I know Bruce Lee is your hero, but there's a different reason I wanted you to watch Karate Kid so many times. The first reason is you should understand the importance of listening and to the instructions of the teacher and do exactly as he instructs. Second, you like you have followed my instructions without clear understanding. You must also be willing to trust your instructors and follow their instructions. So trust your instructors and follow their instructions. Unassured but willing to obey, Caleb did what his father asked him and followed the teaching of his instructors. It was hard work, but Caleb made a decision to obey. He was diligent and he uh, in his pursuit to develop his karate skills. 
although he didn't have class every day, he took it upon himself to practice as though he did. In doing so, Caleb became top in his class and represented his class in the most challenging competitions. He, his father, and his instructors were very pleased with his accomplishments. Caleb was able to appreciate his father's wisdom even more. So here's some commentary. People of faith grow in their recognition and appreciation of the role of divine wisdom in their lives. How do you allow wisdom to center your heart, your will, and your thoughts in God's wills? Now, that's a rhetorical question, but I'm sending it out there because as we look, we see that Caleb, Caleb was, had to follow his father's instructions and also instructions from his instructors. And so as Christians, we do also have to follow instructions and our instructions start with us following the wisdom of God. So how do we obtain this wisdom from God? We read the Bible. We attend a Bible teaching church. We listen to the leaders what God has put in our life. These are just some of the things you can do to obtain the wisdom of God. So we're going to be reading in Proverbs. If you're just now joining us, my name is Dr. Harold Elam Jr. I'm the teacher for Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church Sunday School. Good morning. We are in Proverbs 2. The title of our lesson is The Value of Wisdom. And we're going to be coming from Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Now, we learned last week that the Proverbs come from Solomon. Solomon is the, is the son that was the king of David. Glory be unto your name, God. So we realize that the Proverbs are used to help us understand what we're supposed to do, where we're supposed to go, and how to make an intelligent decision based on the position that we're in. You're in a position of purpose, so you got to make the best decisions that fits what you're supposed to be doing next. Do you know what you're supposed to do next? Glory be unto your name. So Proverbs 2, 1 says, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Verse two, tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. So tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. The Bible teaches us in all of our getting, what do we get? We get an understanding. So this morning, I need us to focus on the value of wisdom. How important is this to you? Now, I looked up the word value because last week, value was one of our words. And so we have to realize that there are so many different avenues that we can go when it comes to defining a word. Well, the word value, here's one, is if it's used as a noun, the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, the work, or usefulness of something. That's a value, the usefulness of something. Uh, 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 definition two, a person's principles or standards of behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. So value can also be, guess what? My judgment, what's important to li in life to me. So I'm going to use that definition because I'm going to use value. Listen, turn your ears to wisdom, concentrate on understanding. The value of wisdom means I have to follow these characteristics in my life in my position of purpose in order to get the wisdom and understand what God is trying to tell me to do. What is God is trying to tell me to, to receive? What God is trying to tell me to say? You need wisdom in all that you do. So we have to be clear. You have to have clear. My wife used the word clarity. You have to have clarity in all that you're receiving because somebody's going to see. Sometimes we go looking for wisdom and knowledge in the wrong areas from the wrong people. And then when we get clarity, it's clarity to a, to a, to a, to something that doesn't apply to what we're supposed to be doing because you went to the wrong place anyway. So there's clarity and error. Does that make sense? I don't want to confuse anybody because sometimes we have an understanding of the thing we're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> we understand clearly, here's what I'm supposed to be doing, uh, but we went to the wrong person for, for that understanding. And this is why it says that we need the wisdom of God. Remember, the, the three things I want you to focus on, I want you to understand the search for the wisdom that comes from God is most important. So we got to know that the wisdom or the information you're receiving is coming from God. And last week we gave you scripture that says, guess what? Try the spirits, buy the spirits, to make sure they're of the spirit. You are, you are able to test every spirit. Glory be unto your name, God. Hold on a second. Man, every time I get to teaching, it seems like I'm sitting in the air conditioned. Glory. 
But listen, you have to understand that when you search for clarity, when you search for wisdom, you got to make sure that wisdom is coming from God. Sometimes we seek counsel and it's not godly counsel. So I'm telling you as a woman of God, as a man of God, as a boy, girl of God, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you have to use wisdom even when you're searching for, for counseling. You got to use wisdom in every aspect of your life when you move throughout your day. And today is a day that you have to use wisdom. Make a decision. Do I do this or do I do that? Because every Every decision you make could be a matter of life or death, could be right or wrong, could mean hell or heaven for you. So this is why I always have you to focus on you because I need us. I need me. Harold got to be right because if I can be in my position of purpose and I can maintain my position of purpose, don't be moved by the atmosphere, by the wind, by the people, by the places, by the things and stay in position. God will send provisions to that position of purpose I'm in because I'm doing what he asked me to do. But when I'm seeking wisdom in that position of purpose, sometimes I got to go to my pastor. I said, God sent me the pastor. So I have to trust and believe that that's that's going to be godly wisdom. I have to go to my brothers, my brothers in the 300. I have to believe God put that in my life and I have to seek out godly wisdom. If I'm seeking something, I have to go to the word of God and I have to seek out wisdom. I have to go into prayer. So that way in verse two can be, can be clear in your life because verse two said, tune your ears to wisdom. Tune your ears to wisdom. you got to hear God, but you can't hear God. Guess what? If you don't know God. Oh, man. And concentrate on understanding. So verse two is very important for a lot of us, for me, because I have to know that I'm hearing from God. I will not make a move until I'm sure, because I've made moves in the, in the, in the, uh, in the past that were bad moves. It were real bad moves, man. And, you know, I like the way pastors say, y'all cats make moves I would never make. Glory be unto God. I made moves that were horrible, that, that had no wisdom or no godly wisdom. And the consequences were almost detrimental. So when you, you have to understand, listen to this, you have to tune your ears to wisdom. You got to make sure that you are what? Hearing from God. In everything that you do. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. Acknowledge him, him being God, in all thy ways, and he will direct thy paths. You sometimes got to wait on God to direct thy paths. And you got to be ready for what God gives you in telling you what to do next. Because sometimes he'll tell you something to do. You don't, we don't want to do that. We're guilty. We don't want to do that because that's not what I thought you were going to tell me to do, God. Hey, to God be the glory. If God says go left, you better go left. Even if you're pouting, even if you're moaning, you better go left because that's the route that God would have you to go. We're in a position, a position of what? A position of purpose. While we're in this position of purpose, we have to maintain our position because as long as we maintain our position and do those things that God would ask us to do, here come the provision. Here come the provisions. Here come the provisions. God will provide for that position. I don't care what people say. I don't care who they call. Pastor preach this morning. If you miss the morning message, my story will not change. Well, my position will not change. You have to maintain who you are, regardless of where you are. You gave your life to Christ. God put you in a position of purpose. Your purpose was to what? Preach and teach the word to draw those men and women to God. That's our ultimate position. That's our ultimate purpose is to draw men and women to Christ, to go into the highways and the byways. So guess what? Sometimes God will put you in a position where you're in the byway. And while you're in the byway, while you're in the valley, while you're in the prison, while you're in that area, preach to Jesus. Preach Jesus. Preach a soul. That's how we win. This is what I'm talking about. Tune your ears to wisdom. Are you listening to God? Or are you listening to man? Verse three, cry, I'm in the New Living Translation. If it sounds a little different from the King James Version, I'm in Proverbs two, one through three. I actually going one through 11, but I'm in verse three, New Living Translation. Cry out for insight. We talked about that word last week, insight. I use that word in my daily work. Insight means I'm looking at the demographics. I'm looking at who's watching, how many are girls, how many are boys. I'm digging deep. How many are between the ages of 18 and 25? How many live in this zip code? Those are the insights. So it says, cry out for insight. So we're in our prayers, in our life, when we're doing something, when we're looking for this wisdom, when we're seeking God in a decision that has to be made, you got to say, Lord, show me. Reveal to me because sometimes it could be the man you're about to marry. 
Could be the woman you dating. Could be the church you're about to go to. Show me the insights because the Bible teaches me regardless of who you are and where you are that guess what? Everything will be revealed. It will be revealed. Nothing goes hidden. I'm paraphrasing, but nothing goes hidden. It will be revealed. So you have to cry out for insight. Lord, show me in your prayers. Lord, show me, reveal to me, uncover this, God. Tell me what I'm doing. That's why Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 has to be an integral part of your, your daily routine. It says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. If you lean to your understanding, you're leaning on the flesh. The flesh can never be saved. You have to kill this stuff daily. Every single day. The flesh can never be saved. That ain't Harold as text. That's in the Bible. The flesh can never be saved. So you gotta lean. You cannot lean unto your own understanding. You have to acknowledge God. God, what should I do about this? See, sometimes I get even details. I look for insight. Lord, do I go left this morning? Do I go the same route I'm supposed to go this morning? Show me, guide me, teach me, lead me. But then you gotta be willing to adhere to what God is saying to you. So verse 3 says, cry out for insight, comma, because I'm going to go to a different subject, and ask for understanding. There's that word again. Twice, twice in, 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 in Proverbs 2, 1 through 3, we see the word understanding. So now you need understanding. You need clarity in everything you do. You need to seek clarity. Guys, I hope I'm being clear this morning. <laughs> I hope I'm giving you clarity this morning because the value of wisdom, you got to put a value on the wisdom that comes from God. But if you don't have that wisdom of God, you can be as smart as you want. You can have all the degrees you want. You can you can, you can use the five-minute words and, and the fabulous characteristics and, and you can have this charisma, but if you don't have the wisdom of God, you're not going to be able to function and operate in the kingdom. God is preparing us for a home so we can go there. I'm going to have a mansion. That's what the Bible tells me. I believe in that. So right now is a preparation period and this wisdom, you got to put a value on the wisdom of God. Remember the three things we got to understand. They got that word four times. Once in the uh, aim for change, twice in the scripture. So maybe that's three times. That's three times. Understand or understanding. Still come from the root word of understand. Because guess what? By the end of this lesson, we said we will. We will together. That's some French. We. We will understand the search for wisdom that comes from God. And it's most important. The search for wisdom. So we all know what the definition of search means. Somebody put down your definition of search. Because when I when I think about search, it means I'm looking for something. It means that I'm, like you ever lose your keys. In your own house, oh my God, Lord, you start searching and you start looking through things that you never, you lifting up the toilet stool as if it done fell in the toilet. You looking under the bed like the keys got wheels and they roll underneath the bed. You looking in pillows, you looking for these keys because you diligently searching for something. And eventually they're laying right there beside you, but you find them. That's the, what I think about when I think about searching, because the Bible said the, uh, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I need you to seek him because then you add a value to wisdom, because when God can step in your situation and he can give you the answer or give you the wisdom to make the right decision. So the consequences are, are, are joyful instead of detrimental. You're going to have value on that wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to have value on that wisdom. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Cry out for insight. So I need you to look for insight. So listen, we're going to look up the word insight because some of y'all understand. See, I know the word because I use it every day, the definition of it. Um, but insight, because I need you to cry out. That's what the Bible says. Cry out for insight. And, uh, and when you're reading the Bible, look up the words. Pastor is always telling us leaders, pastors, preachers, ministers, reverends, whatever you want to call yourself, whatever God has, has put, put you in a position, you need to look up the word. And you need to understand that there are many definitions to the word. But insight is the capacity to gain an accurate and deep initiative understanding of a person or thing. That's one. A deep understanding of a person. New understanding by mentally uh, ill persons or causes that a disorder. So, so I want to go with the first definition as a noun. Noun is a person, place, or thing. Just in case you didn't know, the capacity to gain an accurate and deep initiative understanding or intuitive understanding of a person or thing. A deep understanding, which means that I'm looking at all of this. I'm looking at the insights. I'm not real. I'm, I realize I got traffic and I'm going to use my business as an example so you can see it. So I got traffic in Las Vegas. People in Las Vegas are coming to buy a car from me. But 
I'm getting more business in the 89130 area code. So now I'm going to break down and look at the insights in the 89130 area code. So I'm looking at how many men, how many are women, how many are black, how many are white, how many uh, are in this income bracket. This is the insights. So when you begin to look uh, at, at, the, at the understanding, the deep uh, understanding of, of, the, of the word and looking for wisdom, you begin to ask God, God, show me. Cry out for insight. Show me the insides of this decision. Show me what I'm supposed to do. Show me where I'm supposed to go. Show me what I'm supposed to say. These are the things. Tell me what I'm supposed to say. Because we work for God. Glory be unto your name. I may have a carnal job. I might be out there doing those things that earn money to provide for my family and to God be the glory. But first and foremost, I'm a, a Christian. And my, listen, my position ain't going to change. I'm a Christian. I, I, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. You can call me what you want. I'm crazy for Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about what God has done for me. So in my insight, when I'm looking for wisdom, I'm asking God, what do I do next? What do I do next? Okay, I'm here, Lord. What's next? So cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Mm. That right there is enough. I'm in verse four, New Living Translation. Search for them. Search for what? Search for insight. Search for insight. Bible says in verse four, search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. So you need to look for this. What am I looking for? Tune your ear to wisdom. Concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Verse four says, and for those things that we're looking for, wisdom, understanding, insight. He says, search for them as you would for silver. So you're looking for something of value. See, now I'm putting you to the point you're looking for those keys because you need those keys. Those keys have value because now you got to go to work because you can't miss another day of work. You got to get to your car. Those are the keys to your car. You got to lock the house because you're missing another day of work. They're going to find you. If they find you, you're going to lose some money. If you lose some money, can't pay all your bills. So that's how, that's now you're looking for those keys. And then you wake up the entire house. Oh, y'all gonna help me find these keys. Get up, get up, help me find the keys. You got everybody looking for these keys because there's a value in those keys. Because you started looking at the insights. You started looking deep. Go, oh my God, if I can't find my keys, you start looking. What's well, the same thing when you start looking for wisdom from God? Hallelujah. When you start looking for God, you say, Lord, I got to find God. Got to find it in my wife. Got to find it in my situation. Got to find it on my job. Got to find it in my car. Got to find it in my business. Got to find it in my ties. You got to look for him. And when you diligently looking for him, he see you. He know what you're doing. He know you trying to get an understanding. Glory be unto your name. Scripture says, that I, he, he's a rewarder. <laughs> I'm about to get something. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Glory be unto your name, God. Y'all have to understand there's a value of wisdom. That's what we're talking about. That's the title of the lesson. We're in Sunday school. If you're just now joining us, I'm Dr. Harold Elam Jr. I'm super excited as always. And this is Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church Sunday School where the pastor is Pastor Kelsey West, his beautiful wife, Carmen West, the prophet is Kyle West, and we are Nehemiah, and guess what? We're rebuilding broken walls in people's lives. We're doing it. I'm a testimony. I'm not only a member of the church, I'm also a client where they rebuild broken walls in my life. Hallelujah! <laughs> you gotta get excited. Let me tell you something. God will not stop moving because you say it. God will not stop doing because you in your pity party. You need to seek wisdom in everything you do. People say, why you got so much joy? Because I got my family. Why you got so much joy? Because I got my right mind. Why you got so much joy? Because I got a roof over my head, a car to drive, money in the bank. Glory be unto your name, God. Why you got so much joy? Because I'm in a position of purpose and I'm doing the work that thus saith the Lord. That's enough right there. Hallelujah. Lock me up. I'm going to still be a preacher. Hallelujah. Put me in the hood. I'm going to still be a preacher. Hallelujah. Put me down there. I'm going to still be a preacher. And now you got a platform. You got a voice. Find your voice. And like Pastor said this morning, this message, don't let your story keep changing. Don't let your story keep changing. Who are you? What position are you in? Don't let your story keep changing. Glory be unto your name, the value of wisdom. I like verse 4. If y'all reading in verse 4, we're in Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. I'm in verse 4, New Living Translation. My name is Dr. Harold Elam Jr. This is Sunday school. This ain't preaching. This is teaching. And I need you to learn. But if you want us to stop right now, you can type in the bottom when to give my life to Christ. Hallelujah. Because right now, that's all we want to do. We want to win a soul for Christ. The Bible says he that wins souls is wise. I'll do some watering. The other one, I'll do some planting, excuse me. And the others will do some watering. But God going to give the increase. Hallelujah. You want to give your life to Christ? All you got to do is stop. 
Ha. And you got to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe that he died on the cross and three days later he rose. Oh, yeah, on a Sunday morning. Glory be unto your name. First day of the week. I don't care what the calendar say. I'm telling you what I know. Sunday's the first day of the week. This is Sunday. This is the first day of the week. This is the day my Lord and Savior rose from the grave. That's the day the tomb was rolled back. This is the day he rose. Hallelujah. So glory be unto your name. You want to do that? You want to experience what I'm experiencing? You want to have the joy that I have? Give your life to Christ. You can type it right there. Hashtag, I want to give my life to Christ. And guess what? Nehemiah Ministry will reach out to you. I got some leaders, some friends, some pastors. I got some people on here that can, that can uh, reach out to you. Glory be unto your name. Verse four, search for them as they would be silver. What, what, what's them? Them is the wisdom. Them is the understanding. Them is the insight as they would be silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Verse five, then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you begin to see that God made everything. He made those beautiful mountains I see in Mount Charleston. He made the beautiful desert that you fly over when you're coming into Las Vegas. He made the beautiful beaches of the East Coast and the West Coast. He made the Hawaiian Islands. He made it all. And when you know it for sure in your mind, you know, like the old folks, you say, I know that I know that I know that I know that he done it all. Then you start to fear the Lord. And not like no boogeyman fear. It's reverence. God, thank you for waking me up this morning. There's a scripture that says, Guess what? This morning, hallelujah. I love this scripture because the scripture says, uh, glory be unto your name, God. Glory be unto your name. It's the book of Matthew. The scripture says, uh, woo, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all other things will be given unto you. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's seek ye first the kingdom of God. When you wake up in the morning, there should be a hallelujah because God did something he didn't have to do. He reigned on the just as well as the unjust. When you make it to work, in your car, driving on the busy highway, say hallelujah. When you make it back home from a long trip, hallelujah. You got to be thanking God in everything he's done for you. Don't take credit for what God is doing. Give God praises for what he's already done. Don't take credit for what God is doing. Give him praise for what he's already done. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You got to know your voice. You got to know where you are. Listen to me, verse five, verse five, we're in Nehemiah, listen, we, we are Nehemiah Ministry Christian Church. My name is Dr. Harold Dillon Jr. Good morning. I love each and every one of you guys. Hey, this is Sunday School. The title of our Sunday School lesson, we don't mean to scare somebody off, the value of wisdom. I make no excuses for who I am and how loud I am. I praise God because I'm a trumpet. I'm a voice. I found my voice and I'm going to stay right there. I'm going to stay right there. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm going to always be who I am. Glory be unto you, God. Look, one of our brothers and sisters bought a car for me in the showroom. I was so glad to see him. All I could say was, hallelujah, just because I'm giving God the praise and it was another opportunity for me to see them. Glory be unto your name. Praising God because you know what? When you're in this together, you love family. That's why the Bible says, forsake not yourself to fellowship. And that's a, that's a command. I don't care what nobody said. Forsake not yourself to fellowship. Those are some of the things that we have to do. Those are one of the things, one of the traits I had to learn because I figured, okay, I got God, I got me, I got my family, I got my church, and it became a routine. God isn't one of routine Team, but he does want a, 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 a dedication. He does want you to be dedicated to doing those things that you have to do to get to the next level where he wants you to be. So when you're inside, when you're, you're inside the word of God and you're dealing with a situation or a circumstance and you know the answer, sometimes you have to go to the Bible to find the answer. But if you know the answer, then do it. If you know something has to be done, do it. Sometimes we sit around and wait as an excuse not to do something. Then we say, well, no one told me I had to do it. That ain't wisdom. Hallelujah. You know that there's a soul over there hurting and you won't go say something. Shame on you. You know that you got the word of God and you got a chance to correct something that's going wrong. Shame on you if you don't. One of our Sunday school lessons said that we have to reach out that way. See, 
fear of God allows me not to fear man, not to fear the circumstances, not to fear the situation. And I go in boldly. I come before God boldly, knowing that I'm working on the promises of God. You can't do nothing to me. Glory be unto your name, God. You think that you can, but as long as I got joy, and Paul's a great example. He had joy in prison. He had joy out of prison. He had joy with the saints. He had joy by himself. And when you can find that type of relationship with God, that's why the Bible says in verse 5, Proverbs 2, verse 5, then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. How important is it to understand and fear the Lord? So I need to understand what it means to fear the Lord. Yes, yes, you do. We need to understand what it means to fear the Lord. Because once I understand what it means to fear the Lord, guess what? I will also gain knowledge of God. Don't you want to know who God is? Hallelujah. And he's something different to each and every one of us. He is omnipotent. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. For me, he's a provider. So I, I, I constantly tell you, Jehovah Jireh, I know that once you're in position, this is from experience, once you're in position or back in position and you're doing the purpose that God told you to do, he provides. He provides. Provisions come. They come. They come. They come. They come. You know, glory be unto your name, God. Hallelujah this morning. Okay. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to drink me some coffee this morning, man. I tell you, God is so good. We are in the lesson. We're in Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. The value of wisdom is the title of the lesson. The three words I want you to focus on are understand, yearn. Yearn is a good word. And, and center. Yearn is a country word. I call it a country word. I never used the word yearn until I got down south. Glory be unto your name, God. Hallelujah. Yearn and yonder. I'm going to yearn over yonder. <laughs> uh, verse 6. For the Lord grants wisdom. And it has an exclamation point. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So I'm reading like it's, like it's supposed to be read. For the Lord grants wisdom. Hallelujah. For the Lord grants wisdom. So he, he gives us wit. Hallelujah. For the Lord grants wisdom. And then it goes on to say, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. His being God from his mouth. But if you don't know God, hallelujah, if you don't have a relationship for God, why would he grant you wisdom? You wouldn't even understand what you were, who was talking to you. And that's a problem. That's a problem within the body of Christ, not just the local church, but also the universal church. That's a problem that we're not hearing from God. And if we are here, we're not sure if it is God. See, that's why you have to get in your position and maintain your position. You, once you maintain your position, that's that relationship. There's no doubt in my mind in a crowded casino, at a crowded show, if my wife called me, I know it's my wife. I would know her voice because of the relationship we have, because of the characteristics in knowing who she is, because I know my wife. And that's a several different ways. Now, do you know Jesus? Do you know your God? If he's calling on you right now, do you know? Do you know his voice? That's a question because in verse six, it says, for the Lord grants wisdom and it has an exclamation point. So I'm reading it like it says in the book. I'm, I'm a good narrator. And then it goes on to say, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. But would you know that it's God giving you that knowledge and that understanding? Verse seven, because I need verse seven to help define verse six. He grants a treasure of common sense. I'm reading the New Living Translation. I'm going to go to the King James Version, but he gives you a treasure of common sense. And I, now, parents, if you're a parent, raise your hand. Glory be unto your name. I'm a parent. We use that word religiously. And I'm using that word because that's what we do. Have some common sense, we tell our kids. Have some common sense. Well, I'm telling you, Nehemiah, have some common sense. Because God says he gives common sense. Because some things are common sense. Some things you're already supposed to know. Some things you're already supposed to be doing. You don't have to wait for the pastor to tell you. You don't have to wait for the deacons to show you. You don't have to wait for the Sunday school teacher to teach you. Some things you already know. Don't make an excuse of being lazy and not doing something as we say that nobody never told me I had to do it. Liar, liar, pants on fire. That's the most fraudulent move you can make as a Christian. That is. And I'm calling you out. Y'all can call the pastor on me, text him, tweet him, tell him. Harold called us fraudulent. That's the most fraudulent move you can ever make is to say, I didn't do it because somebody didn't tell me I had to do it. You walk into a bathroom in a church that you worship at and it's dirty and you don't do nothing. Oh, that's just minor. 
That's just minor. You walk by somebody in your church that you worship at and you don't say good morning. Woo! You couldn't have lived in my house. Jean Ellen would have been all over you. Because you how you gonna wake up and so how you gonna be at her house? She said, I pay the rent here. I put a roof over your head. You're gonna not say good morning to me. See, some things are common sense, and we use an excuse. Oh, I don't like her. Then you know what? God don't like you. Because when you get outside of the will of God, you become an enemy of God. And outside of the will of God means that, wait a minute, you like me, but you don't like her? Shame on you. We so to love everybody. Glory be unto your name, God. You have to approach a situation with love. Even if you don't like what's going on, you still got to approach the situation and the person with love. Because that's how Christ approached you. Because at one point, you was unlovable. You was unlikable. And God still approached you. Jesus still came looking for you. He still knocked at the door for you. And as, as disciples of Christ, as imitators of Christ, as, as, as ambassadors of Christ, Right. Then we have to do the same thing. You say you want to be like Jesus. Well, how many souls you going to chase? How many, how many times you going to knock on the door? How many times you going to forgive them? How many times you going to tell them to come to church? How many times you going to keep going? This is what we're supposed to do. How many times did Jesus chase after you? How many times did he forgive you? How many times did he tell you it's going to be all right? Glory be unto your name, God. You guys are not understanding what I'm saying. Hear me this morning. Glory, wisdom, wisdom. I'm in verse six and seven, and I read it because I needed seven. I needed seven to justify six. That's what I love about the scripture, man. Precept upon precept, line upon line. You don't need a man. All you need is the word of God. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. If you're just now joining us, my name is Dr. Harold Elam Jr. This is Sunday School, Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church, where the pastor is Kelsey West, his beautiful wife, Carmen West, the prophet is Kyle West from Outpour. Glory be unto your name. We in Sunday School. We're rebuilding broken walls in people's lives, and we do this every day, all day, without fail, no exception. We are an example, and we want to be an example, because we want to win so for Christ, not just an example for our local area and our local churches, but an example for the world to see this is how you have church. This is what it's meant to be church. Doesn't need a building. All you need is people that believe and know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we agree. The Bible says, when two or three are gathered in his name, there shall I be in the midst. Thank you for showing up, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for showing up, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse six, for the Lord grants wisdom. Did I read it right? It has an exclamation point. Let me start over. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Period. Verse 7. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. Woo! So wait a minute. I stopped at common sense. But this common sense goes to the honest. Mm. Honest. Honest means I, I, I'm not lying. <laughs> and, and usually when a person starts a subject and that I'm not lying, I found out out of uh, history that... They are lying. Uh, I don't know how you even start a conversation like that. And y'all have heard it before. And I'm being serious when they say, listen, I don't want to lie to you. Well, wait a minute. So what were you doing before? See, when you start, we have to use wisdom in our conversations. And listen, that to me, that wouldn't be a wise move. I wouldn't even start a conversation like that because he says we give common sense to the honest. And it goes on to say he is a shield to those who walk with integrity. So if I'm doing this thing right, so let, let's go back. Let's go back for a minute. So we're looking at this wisdom. So God, God calls me. Glory be unto your name. And, and, and he puts me in a position. And, and my position is to be a Christian. Then he gives me a, a purpose in that position as, as a teacher. So let's say I'm in a position of purpose as a teacher. So now I have to maintain my position. Uh, and God's going to provide. So here come these provisions. And as I maintain this position, I have to walk in this position as being a teacher for Nehemiah. I got to be honest. Glory be unto your name. I got to have integrity. Oh my God, listen to that. And so God will reward that because I have to walk in those positions. That's what it means to maintain your position. Because it, just, it means I have to maintain a position of integrity. I have to be honest because they may not even know me. They might just say, ain't that the guy to go to Nehemiah? I have to maintain integrity. I have to maintain my honesty regardless of where I'm at because now I'm out there. Oh, my God. I done found my voice. They didn't see my face. I'm out there. There we go. That's him. Glory be unto your name. Sound like when they was calling Peter when he was denying Christ. There we go. That's him. But then you got to stand your ground. That's right. It's me. I'm right here. What y'all need? What y'all need? What you need to hear? You maintain your position. You don't let somebody change your position. I heard pastor say this morning in the message. Hey, guess what? He said, that, oh, glory be unto your name. You know what? Woo! 
I will not change. I will not change. Glory be unto your name, God. And you have to maintain your position. I will not change my position. I love Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit filled. I love hollering for God. I love maintaining the position. I love teaching for God. You got to maintain your position. I'm a father to Shade and Joshua. I will maintain my position. I'm a teacher in the church of Nehemiah with the pastors Kelsey West. Love my pastor. Love his first lady. Love the prophet. I will maintain my position. I will glorify God in all that he does and all that he decides to do. When you decide to maintain your position, God will offer provisions. When he can offer those positions, I'm talking about maintaining your position, walk with integrity, speak with integrity. Where is your honesty? You need to be honest with people. Girl, don't wear that dress because that dress too short. And if somebody asks for your opinion, hallelujah. See, you got to walk with integrity. Don't tell me to let me know the truth. Hell, you need some mints. That coffee breath is getting on me, bro. Get some chewing gum. See, you got to what? And I'm talking, that's just simple honesty because common sense, the Bible says, and we're going to go back up. And I want you to understand, Proverbs allows you to see what how you're supposed to be walking, how you're supposed to be talking, how you're supposed to have characteristics. Because verse 6 says, for the Lord grants wisdom, exclamation point, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Verse 7, he grants a treasure of common sense to the honest, a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield. He's going to protect me. That's a shield to those who walk with integrity. Woo! I love Proverbs. Y'all ain't hear me this morning. This is Sunday school. Verse 8. He guards the path of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. See, this is awesome. These are promises of God. You talk about, man, well, I don't know. That's that person having that pity party. You don't know. You know why? Because you're not honest with yourself. And the first person you need to be honest with is yourself. Because before you go to God, you got to let God know, God, I'm a sinner. I'm a no good individual. God, I've been mischievous. I've been inconsistent. I haven't been praying. You got to go to God and you got to be honest with yourself. It's almost like the 12 step as an alcoholic. Now, I ain't never been an alcoholic, so I don't really know, but I know it's a 12 step program and I, you see it on television. You hear it in the thing. The first thing they say is, hi, my name is Harold Elam and I'm an alcoholic. And they never say, hi, Harold. Well, guess what? My name is Harold Elam, and I'm a sinner. But you know what? God is fixing me. I'm a work in progress. Hallelujah. Glory be unto your name, God. I'm much better than I was yesterday, right now. I'm much better than I was 10 years ago, right now. You have to be able to not only move and progress in Christ, you got to get to a, every plateau is a different learning lesson. Every plateau is a different cycle. Every plateau, you're going to meet new friends, new experiences. You're going to meet new things. Every plateau, if you're you're not growing in God and reaching a new plateau. Shame on you. Don't give me your resume and you still in the same position. Don't give me your resume and you still doing what you did 10 years ago. What changed? What's new about you? Even a little tree, if you water it and you nurture it, it's going to grow. You're going to say, whoa, that tree done grew. Well, that's what God want to say about you. Whoa, my child done grew. Look at you. Glory be unto your name. I look at my nieces and my nephews. My family's at home right now and I look at them and say, whoa, you done grown. Look at you. You're so much bigger now. You're so much better now. That's what God wants to say to us. Glory be unto your name. We grow in God when we obtain the right information, when we're in the right position. And some of us get in the right position, but we don't maintain our position. We allow the world to knock us out. Nothing should knock you out the box. Nothing should knock you out the box. Man, I love it. Glory be unto your name. Paul put it in the book of Romans and he was adamant about it, man. And I love it. Nothing should knock you out the box. You should not be moved. You should not be moved. One of my favorite hymns, man, and I'm not a singer, so I ain't gonna sing this morning, but I give you the words. It says, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. You better hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. One of my favorite hymns. Because you know what? I'm holding to his hand. I will not let go. I'll be like Jacob and the angel. I'll wrestle you until you bless me. I will not let go. We got to keep going. We got to keep being who we're supposed to be regardless of the situation and the circumstances. I said last week and I say it again. Do not let the atmosphere change you. Do not become part of the atmosphere. Just because you walk in a rainy day doesn't mean your day has to be sad. Just because the atmosphere is sad don't mean you have to be sad. I'm an atmosphere changer. I claim it when I walk in the room. Glory be unto your name. Confidence is in the room. Jesus is in the room. Hallelujah. Because in me is the Holy Spirit. you got to bring God with you everywhere you go. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Glory be unto your name. This Sunday school, Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church Sunday School, where the pastor is.
Kelsey West and his wife, Carmen West, and the prophet is Kyle West. My name is Dr. Harold Elam Jr. This Sunday school. This ain't church. This is Sunday school. And we're doing it just for you. You want to give your life to Christ? Now is the time. Now is the time. If we said something, if we've done something, if we shared some information, some knowledge, some wisdom that's going to help you give your life to Christ, now is the time. I'm telling you, I once too was not saved. I once too was inconsistent. I once too was part of the world and enjoyed my life out there. But guess what? God saved me and he made me a better person. So now I got joy. I'm not just happy. I got joy. I got joy. I got understanding. I have love and I have others that love me. Glory be under your name, God. There's a purpose in my life that has a, a designated end. That end is my mansion. <laughs> Hallelujah. But right now I'm in the preparation period. And if you want that same feeling, that same smile, that same excitement, that same enthusiasm, all this is because of Jesus. Hallelujah. All this is because of Jesus. It's easy for me to smile now. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you call me. It's easy for me to say, hallelujah, and mean it. It's easy for me to say, Jesus is Lord. It's easy for me to say, you need Jesus Christ in your life. It's easy for me to be honest. It's easy for me now. Glory be under your name, God. Glory be under your name, God. Get excited about what God has done for you. This is an individual thing. Glory be unto your name, God. But do not be moved. Do not be separated from your position. If you're a father, don't be moved. Don't let somebody move you out of position saying who you're not. If you're a husband, don't let anybody move you out of position. If whatever you are, whatever position or purpose God puts you in, maintain your position. And when you maintain your position with honesty and integrity, like Proverbs is telling us to do, all of a sudden God will send provisions. Oh my God, it'd be raining. Provision, provision, provision. God will give you things that you thought you would never have. He'll provide in areas you thought you didn't even know you needed provisions in because you're in the right position. You're doing what I told you to do. Glory be under your name. I reward my kids for doing what I told them to do. Hallelujah. Well, God rewards us for what he told us to do. Glory be unto your name, God. Verse 8, he guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Verse 9, then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. That was one of our lessons. Right, just, and fair. And you will find the right way to go. Now, verse 9, I need you to focus on that one for a minute. Verse 9, let me read it again for you. We in, in Proverbs 2, verse 9. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. And you will find the right way to go. How do you get to the verse nine? You got to go back to verse seven, six, seven, and eight. For the Lord grants wisdom. Okay, so it don't come from somebody else. It comes from God. So God can use somebody to give you wisdom that's under His authority. Watch this. From His mouth come knowledge and understanding. Oh, glory be unto Your name, God. You know, I've never suffered from sinuses, but I do have my air conditioned vents are in the ceiling. It seems like I'm always sniffling when I'm doing Bible study. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense. So here in Proverbs, I mean, Solomon's even telling us all this is coming from God. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. So in order to receive some of this treasure of common sense, I know I got to be in a position of honesty. He shields those who walk with integrity. I know I got to be in a position of integrity. See, this is what I'm about maintaining your position. Because if you're honest, stay honest. If you have integrity, keep your integrity. Don't lose your integrity. Glory be under your name. He guards the path of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. He protects those that are faithful to him. Glory be unto your name, God. Do not move from position. Then he goes on in verse 9. Then, after all that, then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. Verse 9 is one of my favorites because it coincides with what one of my Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says what? Trust in him in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. He will direct that path. When you acknowledge God in all thy ways and you tell God, okay, God, thank you for this. Where do I go next? Because you have to thank him first for what he's done, then move on to the next position or the next plateau. But you have to have wisdom in doing that. We obtain this wisdom from God through reading our scriptures, through fellowship, um, through, through attending a Bible teaching church under the right pastor. Because sometimes you're in the wrong position. You might not be in the right church. I don't know. 
glory be under your name, God. But God knows. So when you get in that position of, of, of purpose, you begin to pray and God, what's next for my purpose? What's next in that position? Because I know I wear several hats. I'm a husband. I'm a daddy. I'm a teacher. Glory be under your name. I'm a brother. Glory be under your name. I'm a son. Hallelujah. So in these positions, I'm asking God, okay, what do I do next? Because all of them are operational. All of them are functional. All of them have integrity and honesty. But God, tell me, what do I do next? And it's not hard. Glory be under your name. Because when you maintain a, posi a position and relationship with God, he will guide you. The Bible tells us in verse 9, then you will understand what is right. Regardless of your position, you'll know what's right. You'll understand what's just. Regardless of position, you'll know what's just, what's fair, and you'll find the right way to go. You'll find the right way to go because you'll have obtained knowledge and wisdom that comes from what? God. Hallelujah. You'll know the right way to go. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he will direct thy path. Lord, which way do I go? Sometimes you got to get excited in the morning just for him waking you up. And then you got to ask him, God, lead me, guide me, show me, release me, restore me, replenish me, give me. Hallelujah. You got to come boldly before the throne and give him back his word. God loves his word. It's his word. He doesn't break his word. For the Bible says there's new mercies every morning, new grace. Great is thy faithfulness. We serve a faithful God. Hallelujah. Glory. Great is thy faithfulness. New mercies, new grace. Today I got new mercies, new opportunity. Today I can do something different than I did yesterday. Glory be unto your name. Verse 10. For the wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Verse 11. Wise choices will watch over you understanding will keep you safe. So verses 9, 10, and 11 are the end of that particular um, charter of lesson. But I want to say verses one through uh, 9 through 11 gives us understanding and it gives us clarity in a, in, a, in a perfect close. It gives us clarity in a perfect close on characteristics that we can use in our day-to-day -day operations and things that we do every day. Not wait until tomorrow, but right now. Right now, verse 9 says, then you will understand what is right. That's that word understand again. I've used it one, two, three, four, five times. It says, and you understand what is right because you have to have clarity on what's right. Because I told you, every day you're going to make a decision. Every day you're going to make a decision. Every hour of the day you're going to make a decision. That decision has to be either right or wrong, life or death. It, it, it has consequences. So before you make that decision, after you've done what God has asked you to do, after you've maintained the position that God has placed you in, after you've walked in that position with integrity, after you've walked in that position with honesty, after you've walked in that position with, and you're committed to doing what God has asked you to do, he, the verse 9 said, then you'll understand what is right. Then you'll know what is just and fair. You will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter into your heart. You'll have wisdom. It'll be stored up there. It'll be stored in your heart. Wisdom. It say, and knowledge will fill you with joy, and you'll get excited. Joy, unspeakable joy. But this takes work. This takes work. I want to lose 20 pounds. I gotta go to the gym. I gotta work out. You want to get better in God? You want a better relationship? You want, you want your family to be better? If you're the head of your household, I'm talking to some of you men, if you're the head, then it, it's gonna take work. You can't just sit around and expect something to happen for nothing. Man, you got to take work. You got to put in the work. Ladies, hallelujah. You got to put in the work. This does not come by chance. In order for us to do this thing, in order for us to maintain our position, in order for us to do what's right, this ain't nothing personal. Get the chips off your shoulder. Grow up. Stop being a little boy and a little girl. We're no longer children. This is ministry. This is what we have to do. This is what we have to do while we're here. We're only here for a short while. We're sojourners. Man, I'm going to heaven. There's a place waiting for me. But while I'm here, put in the work. Do what you're supposed to do. This is why God is telling you, use wisdom. You can't use the wisdom of the world. You can't. How can you solve a natural problem? You, oh, glory be unto your name, God. You've got a natural problem, and you're trying to solve it in the natural. Glory. Listen, God controls everything. Everything. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He controls everything. Glory be unto your name, God. And because he does, I fear that God. And because I know why I fear God, I can move and operate under the authority that he's given me in the position of purpose in which he granted me. He will grant me a treasure of common sense. So I can operate throughout the day. And then if I need something that incites, Lord, show me more. 
<laughs> That's what the insights are. More. Show me more. Show me more. Reveal to me who that person is that's coming into my life. Reveal to me this job I'm about to walk on. Reveal to me this neighborhood I'm about to move into. That's when God begins because the Bible says he will shield them. <laughs> Woo! Glory be unto your name, God. Listen, the title of our lesson is The Value of Wisdom. Uh, my name is Dr. Harold Dillon Jr. I'm the Sunday school teacher for Nehemiah Ministries Christian Church where the pastor is Kelsey West, his beautiful wife, Carmen West. You've been, uh, June 14th is Bible study, The Value of Wisdom, Proverbs 2, 1 through 11. Um, by the end of the lesson, we said we will understand the search for the wisdom that comes from God is most important. And it is. You have to search for the wisdom of God. It's the most important thing that you can search for. You, you have to put down and put things aside, put people aside, and you have to put God first. You have to put him first. He is first in my life and foremost. My, it's, it's God, family, church, then job. Glory be unto your name. You have to put God first. It is work. It is work to keep them first, to put them first. You can say it with your mouth, but you have to work. It is a it is a verb. It is an action word, and you have to put him first. So we have to understand and search for the wisdom. We have to yearn for the wisdom that comes from God. You have to want this. You have to want this for yourself. I can't want it for you as much as you want it for yourself. You have to want this. You have to be motivated and determined, and you have to yearn for the wisdom of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Yearn for this. You got to want this. And then center. Center our hearts, our wills and thoughts in the wisdom that comes from God. So this is the most important thing. <laughs> center yourself. What's important to you? You know, not the position at work, uh, not the nonsense that's going on at the, at the coffee machine, uh, not, the, not, the, not the nonsense that's going on in the atmosphere. You, you have to center your life around God because then when you show up, God shows up. You come with answers. You come with solutions. Glory be unto your name, God. I heard pastors uh, recite the scripture. I'm, 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 a, I'm a lender, not a borrower. You have to come with solutions. And it does not, not necessarily mean always a monetary lend. Let me lend you some wisdom. Let me lend you my ear. Let me lend you my time. But that's when you show up. That's when you're committed to God. Man, this Sunday school lesson was more for me as it was for you. But I'm telling you, the value of wisdom, it's important. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for Proverbs. Thank you for Solomon. Thank you for David. Thank you for their obedience. But Lord, most of all, thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for allowing your only begotten son to die on the cross. Lord, gave his life for us that we may live a life and live it more abundantly. Lord, we thank you this morning. God, we thank you for those that are on this broadcast. God, we thank you for our, our, our angels of this house, of Nehemiah, Kelsey, and Carmen West. Lord, bless their hearts, their minds, and their souls. Replenish and replace, God. Bless every member, every family that's represented with Nehemiah. Bless our friends and extensions of our friends of Nehemiah. Lord, bless those that are first-time visitors that have just now come into the fold. Lord, let them continue to join us, follow us, and watch us. Lord, as we continue to do the vision for which you gave our leader, rebuilding broken walls in people's lives. God, we thank you for this day, this hour, and this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this is another lesson, Sunday school. I've enjoyed my time with you guys, but we got to go. Good morning, good morning, good morning.